Well, I present you the case because the one that you have on your booklet is not the right case, the good case. Uh, it is it is uh, 66 years old female and she had a cleft palate. She was operated on for her cleft palate six times with a very bad result and because of that she has a chronic osteation tube dysfunction that lead to a chronic otitis bilateral and she has a bilateral mixed hearing loss around 65 decibel uh, with bilateral uh, tympanic membrane perforation. You can see on the screen, I hope, the audiogram. I implanted her a vibrant sound bridge on the left side uh, in 2010. Uh, the uh, ossicular chain was intact, the implant was implanted on the incus through a posterior tympanotomy. And you can see that on, for Puton thresholds, uh, there is a closure of the airborne gap, no gain above uh, bone conduction, but for uh, speech recognition, there is a uh, 35 decibel gain uh, for speech recognition in quiet. And so today, I will implant a, a vibrant sound bridge on s the second ear, on the right side. Uh, this is a new model. Uh, on va passer au microscope. Ou, ou à caméra de champ pour montrer l'implant, ou donner l'implant. This is a new vibrant sound bridge. And the evolution of the implants uh, are that the principal evolution is that is MRI compatible. That means the up implant. This is the same uh, principle as previously with uh, Pansmus, an electromagnetic vibrator which has to be implanted into the ear. Do you want to the microscope? Then uh, a conductor link, a demodulator, a receiving antenna. And in order, I will pass the microscope. I will take the microscope. It will be better. <coughs> Hop. On change the camera. So you can see here. First, the floating mass trans transducer, the vibrator of the implant, uh, the previous vibrant sound bridge had the clip directly fixed on the vibrator. Uh, this one, no. And so, in order to fit it into the middle ear, you can use different couplers uh, in order to fit the vibrator in different locations into the middle ear. This is uh, the demodulator and the receiving antenna and to uh, in order that the implant will be MRI safe in each magnet this one and into the vibrator there is in fact two magnets in opposite polarity that uh, cancel each other uh, under a magnetic field so now and also there is two little uh, legs to fix the implant will screw into the cortical bone. This is a new uh, sandwich. Now I will first check to the anatomical <laughs> situation. Vous le gardez, on va laver. Aspiration 15. This is a very small mastoid. And so I performed a mastoidectomy with a posterior articotomy. As on the other side, the Ossicular chain is complete but was partially fixed by tympanosclerosis at the level of the fossa incudis. Lavage moi-même. And so I removed this tympanosclerosis and now the ossicular chain is mobile. Bouché.
Okay, as you can see, there is not a lot of place, and there is still some tympanosclerosis into the attic. Petit crochet. Thibault? Yes? Do you not think you are likely to get recurrence of the tympanosclerosis? If I have what, please? Do you, do, do you not think that the fixation will return? Ah, it is possible. It is possible uh, in Good question. what proportion it will uh, decrease the efficiency of the sun bridge. I cannot say for the moment. If it happens, then I can revise and turn to put the sun bridge on the stapes, for instance. Yeah. Lavage moi-même. Now, another question might be that, that there are alternatives such as a bone anchored hearing aid, a Sophonos, um, sound bridge. No, no. Sophono is a very bad device, bad design, bad technique, and bad results. I don't use Sophono. Okay, well, forget uh, Sophonos. A, a bone bridge. A bone anchored hearing aid. A bone bridge or a bone anchored hearing aid could be used. The idea is that in that uh, ladies' uh, uh, bone conduction thresholds are around 40, and the aim is to close the bone gap by the implantation of the vibrator and then to provide some gain by amplification. And only a middle ear implant can do that. Uh, on the left here, you can see there is only a little gain by amplification on the mid frequencies. But uh, the okay. principle is to try to do that, to accumulate the ample gap closure by the implantation of the vibrator into the middle ear, and again by amplification above bone conduction. So I will put the implant now into the subperiosteal pocket. And um, just, just in case you haven't noticed, the, um, the audiogram in the booklet here it, yeah, it, it is, is not, not the right. Same. It's not the right audiogram, and the audiogram which was shown on the screen is the uh, correct audiogram. Pas smooth, voilà. so. uh, now I put the implant with a bony bridge. Ah, I put the, co the coupler. <laughs> I have to do it before. Sorry. Uh, voilà. On va prendre le coupler. I can show you. Uh, no, oui. Uh, uh, Avec la caméra de champ, il faudrait montrer ça, s'il vous plaît. Uh, we will show you uh, with the field camera the fitting uh, on the model. Uh, oui. You have uh, the model of uh, the ossicular chain and uh, the FMT would be fitted uh, with a clip on the body of the incus. The with FNT transversal to the body of the incus. So, uh, alors, uh, le coupleur. If only it was that big in real life. <laughs> the idea of this coupler is for sensory neural or mix or uh, earring loss where the ossicular chain is intact. The idea is to avoid to perform a posterior tympanotomy. So now, uh, here is the coupler. You can see it is a, a both-sided uh, clip with one side for the FMT and underneath, underneath, underneath one side for uh, the incus. So I have to fit the FMT into the coupler. Okay, do you see? Did you see it? Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah, we can see. Okay. And now I will remove the coupler holder. Alors, uh, pince mousse. And here is a coupler for the short process of the incus. 
for the body of the incus. That's okay. So now I have to put it into the ear. Vous allez m'enlever mes lunettes, s'il vous plaît. First step is to introduce the receiving antenna in the superior sterile pocket. Then I push the conductor link under this bony bridge, pince rato. Um, yes. With the two little drill, or the two little guide holes that you're now going to drill for the, the little screws at the side, is that for tie down or are you going to put a little screw in there? Uh, could you repeat, please? Sorry, I just see that you've recessed the bone. Is it necessary to drill a recess if you're going to uh, put a little screw in? I, those two I, I made a too big recess, in fact. Okay. Uh, it is a mistake. Uh, I like to have a little recess in order that uh, implant will be less uh, palpable by the patient. But in, in that case, I make an excessive recess here. So I will now just protect Pansmus, the FMT, putting it into the mastoid, and after put the screw before to put uh, the FMT on the incus. Hello. Donc là, il y a un tournevis et voilà. Um, the screws are self-tapping screws provided with the implant and the screwdriver too. Thibaut, can I ask you a question? With this, with your experience, you've got a huge experience with the uh, vibrant. Uh, with this new placement on the incus body, do you find that the rate of amplification or bone curve overclosure is as good as it was on the incus long process, the way it was placed before? Uh, it's, it's a question for me. I think there is not a very big difference. Uh, Medel says that they made uh, laser vibrometry measures showing that there is only very little difference. But uh, what's your experience? Have you found it similar? Uh, I cannot answer you, uh, no, pas, uh, mousse for the moment because uh, I have not enough experience with this placement. When I have, will have performed some more, uh, perhaps I will feel a di see a difference, but for the moment, not. Hop, voila. Thibault, I have also a small question because I don't quite understand it. This, the, it's very nice surgery, but I don't see why you are putting um, this FMT on the incus while I think the chain is, is uh, fixed. The, 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 the uh, so I would, I would think of, of interrupting the chain, so getting rid of the fixation, putting it on the stapes head. And no. have a more, or am I wrong? Or what is the, 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 the what was the situation on the opposite side? What did you the, do on, on the opposite on side? On the opposite side, uh, the ossicular chain was complete like that, and I uh, inserted on the ossic on the incus, like in a sensory neural earring loss, through a posterior tympanotomy. <laughs> the uh, fitting on the incus today, uh, as is uh, done in order to shorten the surgery by avoiding the posterior tympanotomy. Uh, that's why I put it on, on the incus mouché. But if the chain is intact, I don't want to interrupt it to put the vibrator on the stay piece. I prefer, in that case, put it in the incus. On the incus, long process or short process in that case. Alors, um, Donnez-moi le pince mousse. So you can see that the legs of the clips are not equal. There is two long legs and two short legs. And I have to put the long legs toward the 
malleus and the short legs towards the short process of the incus. There is a little part to hold uh, with the micro pass, to hold the uh, coupler with the micro forceps. Smooth. I have to. to grip it. So, and now I have to, to crimp it on the body of the, of, of the incus. Yeah. Is it center? C'est centré. Inspiration. OK, and that's done. I just have to adjust it with a needle. Alors, vous allez me donner la pointe mousse. Aspiration 10. I thought it's really more easy that uh, to do it uh, on the stapes uh, or long process, even in that case which is not favorable because uh, the attic is re really narrow. Okay. And that's all. I check that the vibrator do not touch the attic walls. That's okay. The clip is well crimped on the body of the incus, and it's finished. And so you can imagine that in a mastoid with a more easy anas anatomy, sure. it's really simpler to crimp it like that. Tibo, yes. Just have you ever had one of these falling off? Please. One of these uh, FMTs actually coming off. Um, do they come loose and fall off sometimes? Uh, I have no experience of that for the moment. <laughs> and in, in my opinion, this is an illustration that when you think about vibration we think about mas macroscopic vibration but it is not the way that uh, earring works it works with micron or ancient uh, amplitude vibration and so in that case it's not the same micro mechanics and no matter that uh, vibrate the vibrator would be perpendicular to the incus the only uh, important thing is that the contact is good, and then the micromechanics works through the circular chain. Okay, well, that's that's absolutely great, Tiba. Um, okay, that that's finished. Now I have just to close. Say again. The, the surgery questions? is finished. I have just to close now. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, are, are there any other questions for Tibo? Yes. Uh, I'm just asking everybody in here whether they have any burning questions to ask you any incisive comment no no yes yes mark yes i was wondering if preoperatively you do measure the space on the ct scan and that if that's ever changed your approach yes i, I check the space on, on the ct scan i didn't measure uh but uh, i checked the space uh, into the we uh, on the ct scan around uh, the space around the the incus body yes yeah, and Malha? So Thibaut, I would, uh, when you report the results, I'd encourage you to report the 4K, 6 and 8K uh, air curve as well, because you might expect the incudomalleolar joint to drop some of the high frequencies, at least in temporal bones it does, but people only report up to three, so we might miss some of that. So 
it'd be worth looking at the uh, four, six, and eight k air curve to see if that gets better or not. Uh, it's a question for me. That mean um, my feeling is that uh, the closer to the oval window you are, the better uh, energy uh, <laughs> energy transfer will uh, be. Uh, but the question is that perhaps implanting on the long process of the anchors or stay piece is a little bit more efficient on high frequency but does it make a difference the clinical utilization for the moment i have uh, not my own opinion when i talk to medals they say there is no uh, sensible difference in results uh, personally uh, my feeling is that it's better to implant on the stay piece uh, or incudostapidal junction. But I don't know exactly. So I, I, am to, I have to try uh, a certain number of patients with implantation on, on the incus body. And so I will, if clinically it makes a difference. I mean, presumably, if you found it not effective, you could go back and simply alter the way you've done this and you could just replace it on the stay piece sure sure yeah okay okay well uh, are there any other questions for Thibaut before we um, leave him to close